Chapter 12, The Return of the Knights of Horror, 2021, Year 4. Now, with coming back to the haunt scene again, it, it was actually kind of refreshing. COVID was a little bit of a rough start in the beginning of 2021, but started going downhill little by little. People, they started releasing the vaccines more, so people were getting vaccinated, and, and it was just things were starting to open up again. Going into summer of 2021, we were curious whether or not the haunts were going to open up, and then we got confirmation that haunts were opening up. Not Scary Farm returning with an event. Halloween Horror Nights returning with an event. The Los Angeles Hay Haunted Hayride returning with an event. But there would be no Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. Not to mention that this year was indeed my first year ever taking a trip out to Orlando, Florida to visit Halloween Horror Nights out there in Orlando. Also, because we didn't have Midsummer Scream's fifth anniversary yet, they postponed it because they wanted to make sure it happened at Long Beach Convention Center. So they gave us something small, uh, a little mini Midsummer Scream, if you will, called Awaken the Spirits that had almost the same exact feel as Midsummer Scream did. So let's, uh, let's break it down and let's see what went on in 2021. For starters, we did more original behind-the-scenes content. Um, last that last year, we were actually invited out by uh, a good friend of ours named Noah, who uh, let us pretty much be his monster for his short film. So that was a lot of fun to actually film a little like short film like that. I had never seen the behind-the-scenes of how those were made, yet alone be in one. Um, and it was a lot of fun. I, it was just it was cool to like hang out and and just just watch everyone do their craft and stuff. And it was really it was just a lot of fun just to see more behind the scenes about it. And then pick Noah's brain a little bit about his universe and whatnot. But we were we were doing a more original content at the beginning of the year because we needed to kind of separate ourselves from um, haunt speculation so early in the year because it's really you know it, it, when you predict too early it starts to get a little like repetitive and whatnot. So we brought back some original shows that we did back in the day called Horror Icon Mashup where Rob and I, we got two uh, horror icons and we would uh, break down their statistics and who would and we would see who would win in a fight, but we'd leave it to the audience to vote ultimately who would win. And then we would reveal those results on the next episode. That was a lot of fun. Then we started doing more podcasts and that was a lot of fun getting into the 2021 year. But speaking of podcasts, that was the year that Shoot the Shit made its return. Um, and we, we, were, we were doing a little bit more with that and, and trying to bring that back and, and just trying to do it our own way. Um, because, you know, if you guys know anything about that podcast, we were doing it with two other people who we no longer talk to. So I wanted to keep doing it, but I wanted to do it my style. So I brought it back. It's been a lot of fun. We just wrapped up a season for 2022 as well, which we'll mention in the next episode more. So that was a lot of fun. Um, we got to interview Michael Siegel, who played one of the one of the Terenzi brothers from Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and that really furthered my love for the movie even more. Um, I remember that night very, uh, very like it was yesterday because you know he lives all the way in the uh, overseas in New Zealand. We're all the way over here, so I had to stay up to like four in the morning, which was about twelve his time to do the podcast. And I remember every bit of it. It was a lot of fun, and we did it, and we had a great time. And uh, you know he was he was a very nice person. And that's, you know, that's all I was thankful for. And, and because of COVID, I got to do this, you know, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, we brought back, again, more original programming. So we brought back another fan favorite show, Timelines. We did a couple episodes of that, which we like to do. We like to sprinkle here and there at least once or twice a year uh, just to have something that is a throwback to from when we first started, even um, with now of how we are now. And we're just trying to improve our craft as to see this is how it looked and this is how it is now. Uh, the QM slider team was the big one of 2021. We finally uh, set up dates to interview the entire team. And this would be the first time I met them. This would be the first time that I was introduced to them. And little did I know this would be a long, long friendship that has built more and more within the last year or two. And it's been, it's been awesome. I really want to thank Scott for that one again. That was a lot of fun. But we got to interview uh, two um, and they were going on every week, so they took over the entire month of Nights of Horror. Every single week, there was another podcast with two of the members of the Q uh, QM Slider team. So that was a lot of fun, um, and I still get a lot of good feedback about those today. So I'm doing something right with my show. 
Knights of Horror Factor Fiction was another original program that we brought on the channel. I would take a lot of my friends or a lot of, you know, people that were in the Knights of Horror, and I would see if they can guess if these paranormal clips were fact or fiction. That was a lot of fun. I remember doing that, and I was kind of like the host of the show. I'd have to do research and find out if every video was real or fake. Um, that was probably the hardest part about that show was doing the research, shooting it, and editing it was not hard, but freaking having to do the research to figure out if they were fake videos, if they were real, was the hardest thing. I had to bury deep in like Reddit and shit like that, but that was a lot of fun to do that. Um, and then we got introduced to Halloween Depot. Halloween Depot was something that Rob started going to and I, I started hearing about it. This was kind of like a, a little spooky swap meet in a way. And, um, you know, we, we ended up, uh, just getting to know the owners really well and, and just to see what they had to offer. And now this, this event has grown ever since they done it. I mean, they, they're getting a lot of special celebrity guests that are in the horror realm uh, over and they, they just keep improving their events and, and whatnot. And then when it's a Halloween season comes, they, they shut down the Halloween Depot and they open up um, the costume shop, which is really cool. So congrats to these guys. And I, I'm very fortunate to have to know the, uh, these guys. They've, they've done something incredible with Halloween Depot and we look forward to going every time. Uh, you know, we did uh, Awaken the Spirits, which was a lot of fun. I got to meet the uh, a lot of the voice actresses of Resident Evil uh, 7 and 8. So that was a lot of fun. Um, we also got to do a lot of panels, and that was the first year we were given the opportunity to interview John Murdy at Halloween Horror Nights. That was something that, you know, since starting Nights of Horror that I wanted to do. I've gotten to meet him a couple of times throughout going to Nights of, uh, or going to Horror Nights, but to actually finally interview John Murdy was a dream come true, and, and I really had a great time for that. And I want to thank Exploring Attractions for that because he uh, gave Rob and, and, and I his media so we can uh, get that footage for him, and uh, it really came in clutch. So appreciate you, brother, for that. Um, this was a big one for me because uh, she's a good friend of mine, and I wanted to get a podcast with her really bad, and... I finally got one, which was Trix the Trickster. We got her on the podcast finally to talk about her backstory, her love for Haunt, her her extensive career in the Haunt world and in the entertainment world. And we just got to know her a little bit. And it, it was great to finally talk with my friend and uh, let the world invite, uh, invite the world in to know her as well as Trix the Trickster. And she's a very talented person. And it was, uh, it was great to really improve on that relationship last year, uh, going into this year and, and more and more to come. So that was very fun. I would say probably the biggest highlight though, of this, that year was going to HHN Orlando. I had been obsessed with Orlando's events since I was a kid before I even started Nights of Horror. That's what really turned me onto the event was, um, Jack the Clown. And it happened to be the 30th anniversary of Halloween Horror Nights. So I couldn't have picked a better year to go. You had all the icons there, the ones you can even barely see and stuff. And a great lineup of mazes, a really big love letter to the 30-year history of Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios Orlando. And I was just psyched to go. I mean, I got to meet some of the Boo Bros in person. I got to meet Connor. I got to meet Chris. I got to meet Losh in person. And that was a lot of fun. Um, just going to the park through the day and at night and just to hang out with some of the boo bros was just a, a great time. Connor and I went through a couple mazes. Losh and Chris, you know, gave me a tour around the park throughout the day, both parks and Losh really hooked it up with just kind of like a VIP treatment. Um, and I'm very thankful for my boo bros and, uh, I can't wait to go back. We're going to try to be going back next year, but we had a great time. Mazes were great. Scare zones were amazing. The, the lagoon show was awesome. I mean, and the park itself was just a great time. Like, I, I, I have dreams constantly of going back. Like, so I'm getting there. And then once we returned, we got back to our haunt season, and we kicked it off with Not Scary Farm and Halloween Horror Nights. So we went to Not Scary Farm opening night. Uh, the new mazes for that year were Mesmer, and the new scare zone was the Goring 20s. And it was a lot of fun just to be back home, to see everybody doing their thing, going through Mesmer, Origins, all of our favorites. It was Paranormal Inks last year, so we were going through that a few times. Uh, and to go through all these um, iconic scare zones and then to see the new one, Goring 20s, come to life, we had a great time uh, seeing Puppet up. You know, we always have a fun time at Knott's, and, and we've been going every year because of it. Uh, it's just another home for us. We then go to HHN this, that year, and it was just a fun time. I mean, we went to enjoy 
uh, what they had. And, and for me, going to Orlando and then coming back home and seeing the Hollywood one, I mean, you could tell the differences in production and whatnot, but it was still a fun time um, at the event. Universal Monsters, The Bride of Frankenstein Lives, just was probably the best maze at, at the event that year. But it was just good to be back in that atmosphere again. It was good to just feel normal again. And that I think that was the most important part of the return of the Knights of Horror and Haunt season. We just felt normal and alive again you know some places we had to wear masks some places we didn't but you know we got to we got to check out you know haunts again after being away for a year it just felt good to be back in the parks again going through mazes and going through scare zones and whatnot it was just a fun time we took a trip oh, i took multiple trips over to haunted hayride last year actually and that was a lot of fun um to see some of my friends work that event as well uh, that was that was a lot of fun to, to kind of go through that and, and see what was next for the story of Midnight Falls. They were in a brand new location that year, so it was a lot bigger. Uh, Hayride felt a little bit smaller, but it may have been bigger foot plant. But um, then they had a new maze, Dead End Diner, and they had uh, returning mazes of the Midnight Mortuary uh, and Trick or Treat. So that was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed my time at Hayride. And, uh, yeah, but the, the one event, and that's why we had tricks on earlier in the year that year is because the one event I had not been to, but I've heard so much of was six flags fright fest. And we went out, we got to see the slider show. We got to go through their mazes. We got to go through their scare zones. And I was really just impressed with the event. Um, it, it was a fun time to see the, the, I see a, see a slider show. I haven't seen a slider show since not scary farm, but then to see one at six flags fright fest was so fucking bitchin. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And then just being, in City Under Siege and, and watching the um, Exile Brothers work, watch Green Clown work, watch Tricks work. So much fun. It was just a comedy show every single night, and we would just go to hang out in that zone. I, I, I almost felt like Ghost Town, where if I were going to leave that zone, I was going to miss something hilarious because I was trying to get these guys a ton of great footage because they, they were just killing it out there. Uh, we returned to Dark Harvest and the Car Wash, which was a lot of fun. We actually... Uh, we did Dark Harvest, and that was a lot of fun. We got invited out to Media Night last year. I had come straight from a Dodger game straight to uh, Rob meeting me at my house and then us going out to Dark Harvest. Didn't really even change. Just ran inside, got my camera, and left. But Dark Harvest was a lot of fun. They invited us out for Media Night, and that's when I actually finally got to talk with uh, Sharp Productions for the first time. And it was definitely, um, it was definitely a, a fanboy interaction because I grew up watching Sharp Productions all my life, and then to actually finally sit and talk with them and of how how much of an inspiration they've been it's been it was really cool going to dark harvest so that was a lot of fun corn maids was back as usual better than ever uh to go through with some of our friends was a lot of fun and and might i add this 2021 season probably wouldn't have been possible i uh, know it not even probably it wouldn't have been possible if rob wasn't there helping me film rob was a huge part of 2021 nights of horror and um, I owe him all the credit I can because that guy did a phenomenal job troopering through a lot of events and, and getting a lot of great footage. Without him, I couldn't have done a lot. And, and then having Sammy come down every now and then was a lot of fun because, you know, with him as an, another on-screen personality uh, other than myself, it was, a lot of, uh, it was a lot of fun when we always get to do the duo stuff. But Six Flags and, and Dark Harvest were just an amazing time. The car wash, it, it was fun. Uh, that not as many people were working there since other haunts were opening up, so people were going back to where they were. But it was still a fun time, and we enjoyed the car wash. But that same night of the car wash, we went to another new haunt to us, which we actually just made a video of a few weeks ago called Castle Dark, which was located in Riverside, California. We had a phenomenal time there. We went through all the mazes, but I think what's the most memorable things that we did at that event was going through phobias, which was a lot of fun, and going to do the... Um, the golf tournament, which was so much fun and so stupid, but it was just, uh, it was, it was a fun time. And, uh, I, I can't wait to go back this year if, if we're welcome back or whatnot, but I want to go back next year and, and, or this year to see what they have to offer. We did the try not to get scared challenge and we called it the three stages of hell. Cause we had three different home haunts. We were going to go to, to do the try not to get scared challenge this year. We went to the Grey Phantom, which started right down the street from me. I mean, we, that's where we started at. We went to the Grey Phantom. We did um, individual walkthroughs on that one, which was really fun. And then um, right after that, we went straight to Pirate's Cave. We did uh, a together walkthrough on that one since it was based on a, uh, you know, a 
you know little buddy system and whatnot so we did that and that was that was a phenomenal maze that alone both the mazes i just mentioned were great for the home haunt industry then we went to corona haunt and that's where we finished it off with tales of halloween and that was such a great maze sadly corona haunt and pirates cave will not be returning for this season but when they do come back i promise you you guys do not want to miss them they got these guys put on some of the most terrific work i've ever seen and same goes with ernie ernie puts on great stuff with uh, with gray phantom so that was cool. We also returned to Drex Society that year. However, we uh, we got an opportunity from Drex Society, which I didn't film, but I'm going to film if we get another opportunity like this again. But we got to be a scare actor for a night at their home haunt, and that was a lot of fun. I mean, I had never done anything like that, but I've seen so many people do it, and I've seen so many styles that I've kind of just Frankenstein things that night as I went. But I played a... T-Rex from the year 3000 and we were kind of like mutated T-Rexes so we had brains and everything we could talk I had a gun it was a lot of fun um and towards the end of the night me and my partner Sarah we just we started she was the the girl that I was uh, sharing the room with um we started just coming up with shit on the spot to make each other laugh because we were so tired and so sweaty but we had we were having so much fun that we were just trying to make each other laugh at that point and it was a fun time I I hope I get to come back next or this year um, either there or whoever else wants to have me out. Like, that would be a, so much fun to do more again. Um, and then we did, of course, character Appreciation Month, but it didn't go that long because of uh, mental. I had a mental, like, I needed a mental break from Night Support. But we did character Appreciation Month. I think we had about, like, six or seven guests on the show. And uh, it was great. It was a lot of new people that you guys hadn't seen before and a lot of um, returning people as well. But it was a lot of fun to do Scaractor Appreciation Month again, and I really just enjoyed doing that. But there was a lot of things happening in my life that just kind of all caught up to me at once. So at that point, I was like, I need to take a mental break. I just need to um, make sure my health is good. And I, it was, I was glad that I did that because it got me into streaming again, and that was kind of therapeutic for me to kind of forget about a lot of things and not have to worry about anything. Um, but at the end of 2021, um, well, right before haunt season ended, uh, I was given access to come to the Pirates Cave and make a behind the scenes documentary about um, how their haunt was built because this was like their most technological year ever. So I got to get a full behind the scenes documentary on the channel and that was a lot of fun. But, you know, I had taken my mental break for so long that I had almost forgot about it. Then, you know, Jacob hit me up and... I think that was what sparked my that's what kind of sparked my 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 passion for Nights of Horror again after taking that mental break. I was like editing it and I just remember just having a good time and, and just having fun doing it. And we would go ahead and launch that on January first, twenty twenty two. And that was a lot of fun. Uh thank you, Pirates K for your continued friendship and just letting me do a documentary like that that really that really struck my love to be more behind the camera than I am in front of it and uh you know it was just a great return for the Knights of Horror uh not that good of an ending but it was a good return uh things were normal again at least they were feeling normal and uh we were in a good spot and I just I really had a very good feeling after doing that Pirates Cave documentary that 2022 was going to be a very good year for us and I'm not going to lie, so far it has been. But that's for the season finale. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to most of my story for Knights of Horror Origins. Um, we're going to end it tomorrow with the final episode. And if you've been with me for, 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 for quite some time, you know what's going, been going on in 2022. If you're just joining us, we'll catch you up to speed. And if you just joined in 2022, then you will know what went on in 2022. But we're going to basically, we're going to share our purpose. Till then, my name's Anthony, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Give them the love.